welcome once again uh, back to the Axminster Skill Centre. It's time for another Skill Centre at Home video. Um, it's a continuation of the little spice rack project, really. So in previous weeks, we have shaped the cabinet sides. We made a template and shaped these sides. Then we made a little letterbox jig to create an equally height uh, shelf groove. Uh, today, it's kind of exciting day, from my opinion anyway, it, we, we're dovetailing. Um, we're not chopping in the dovetails by hand, it's not, not necessarily my thing, um, certainly my colleague Jason's thing, uh, maybe you'll see a video from him before too long. Um, but today we are dovetailing with dovetail jig and router. We're going to be using the UJK dovetail jig, we're going to be using the Bosch router. This particular dovetail jig, just while I'm on it, isn't available right now. It's been available for years, but we felt we could make it better. So it's in redevelopment to bring you a dovetail jig that's more than a dovetail jig, a kind of universal jig, and uh, it's actually made in the UK. How about that? So that's what we're working on. So not available today, but be available by, by the end of the year, maybe sooner. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the nuts and bolts of this particular jig and what we need to do to create the, the lapped dovetail or half blind dovetail, only visible from, from one surface. Both pieces are going to be cut in one go. We're going to do the, the pins and the tails in one. And if I pop that there, Ben, does that work? Can you yep, see that? Good. They're going to be machined like that. Now, hopefully, you can clearly see the dovetail shape and you can see a little offset, and it's that offset that's really important to ensure that these, with a flip round after that, come together. And we're going to go through step by step. There's a lot of dovetail jigs, and I think, to be honest, most dovetail jigs kind of work in this way. This one's, you know, a little bit better, of course. Um, but let's look at step by step. Now, firstly, I'm going to do a test piece. Before we get into our uh, actual final piece, Material that's the same sort of width, we're dealing with 16 mil and 18 mil, so 16 mil for the sides, 18 mil for the top and bottom, and of course we've got a slightly different width on the top than we have to the bottom, so we'll consider that as we go through. But I've got material of equal kind of dimensions, equal size, just to do some test cuts, all right, just to get the fit just the way we want it. So that's what we're going to do first. Before I start, I'm going to make sure I mark up what I want is my non-visible, my inside face. Now that's quite important. So we'll go just right in on it. Because with this, inside face is out. Remember that, inside out. If you can see the inside of your cabinet, it's the right orientation. There might be a blemish or a knot that you don't want to see, you want to hide it. There might be a piece of beautiful figured grain that you do want to see. So you want it on the outside of the cabinet. So inside, when we're machining, facing out you need to see that in so let's just pop this off for a second Ben can you come nice and close in for me now all right all good yeah so we can see we've got our half blind template with equally spaced fingers we've also got a side stop here which is adjustable now remember that offset the difference edge to edge from your material. That's what takes care of your offset for you. All right. So that's important. We'll set that to the material when this, we set the material. Another critical thing, is we, we keep the, the template flat and in line. All right. And there's an easy way to do that as well. All will I do, let's pop this extraction. This extraction piece is good, draws away a good portion of the waste, but also gives you an extra bit of support. When using your router, there's a lot of jigs like this. Quite often, this is open here, and it's easy just to tip when you're machining and create a little gap in your joint, which you don't want. But this particular UJK jig is nice, because it's got that extra bit of support, coupled with some pretty good extraction. The first thing I would do is level this. Now, the piece of material that's coming in horizontally is my 18mm. I'm just going to drop that out of the way. 
I know I'm going to knock it over. Here we are. Piece of material I'm going to machine first, put in first, is, is my 18 mil. That's going to go in there. So the clamp comes under, slides under. But I want to put a piece in this side as well. I'm not going to cut that, I'm not going to machine that. That's really just to support the template, to support the plate that you're running on. All right? So everything stays flat and level. Then what I do, now this is a critical thing. 11 millimeters. Remember that. 11 mil. From the top surface, just scribe a line at 11. Okay, you can highlight it with a pencil if you can't quite see it, but that's going to be your depth of cut. You need to set your cutter to that depth when we get going. I'll show you that in a moment. Load your board in, up against the underside of your fingers. All right. Don't worry about this board for the minute. This is just keeping this flat and level. So underside of the fingers. And what I'm going to do, can you see that? Is that right? You got yeah, good visibility good. there. I'm going to try and get this central to my fingers. And I'm looking at this gap here. From this finger to this corner. This finger to this finger. By all means, if you want, get yourself a little set of calipers or a rule and just measure that. I've got pretty good at doing it by eye, so that's what I'm going to do. There we go. So we're just centralizing there, and I'll lock that in position now. Then I'll bring the side stop over to my material, just so it makes contact in this area here, and I'll lock that off. Now the offset is created for me there's offset built into this side stop so my other board then comes up against the other one over to the side stop all right we'll flatten it off we want to make sure that we're as flush as we can be here all right so let's just tweak that make sure our template is flat that's lovely so there we go side stop locked off now key so a good, clean joint is obviously sharp cutters, but square material, square, clean, flat material. If you've got a piece that isn't cut square, you'll end up with gaps one end opposing to the other. You can see the offset there. The edges of our boards are staggered half inch. Half inch pitch dovetails, these are. We're flat in this area. This board is central to our fingers. We've got our 11 millimeter scribe line, which I'm gonna set the cutter to in a moment. Everything locked off. We've got the packing piece here, giving us a bit of extra support. So this, there isn't a temptation for this template just to tip up or down. Everything's locked off positively. You know, we're going into end grain on this board. So if it's not locked and gripped really well, there's a, there's a potential for it to twist and skew over. So, I'm a router. Now today I've gone for the Bosch GOF 1200. Reason I like this one, got him. Reason I like this one is for this lovely built-in fine adjuster. We've got our depth, our cutter depth set at 11 millimeters, but for certain materials, we just need to tweak that. Maybe bring it up to 10 and a half millimeters. Now you probably know yourself doing a half millimeter movement just on your plunge action is really tough so a little fine adjust i mean a lot of routers have got an aftermarket accessory you can buy but this bosch has built-in fine adjustment so that's one reason i use this another reason obviously we've got the cutter i fitted dovetail cutter that comes with this sort of jig but we've got a guide bush we've got a template guide bush that is very specific to these finger sizes, which is going to follow these fingers with our cutter protruding through to cut our dovetails. And remember, we're cutting in one. I like the Bosch quick release system. That goes on there like that. And then literally just drops into the base of the router. There's a little lever. There we go. And a 
that's it. That's fitted. No screws, no nuts and bolts to do up. That is fitted in position. The adapter and the bush in this point must remain flush or beneath the level of the base with just the actual template ring, uh, the guide bush ring rather, to run on your template. Okay, so that's fitted in. It's a small diameter cutter, so I'm running at full speed. I want to set my cutter depth. Now this is done in situ, and we're literally just going to plunge down until the tip of my cutter just touches the, that, that scribe line. So the finer line you've got, the better. The sharper pencil or, you know, a little um, scribing device like this is good just to give us that start point. Now this is where the fine adjuster really comes into its own. I can just tweak that to bring me up to my scribe line. Let's have a look. Can I see my scribe line? Two seconds. Let me just highlight that. It's a little bit dark under there with the, where we are in the workshop. I'm just going to highlight that scribe line. My 11mm mark. That's better. Probably my eyesight. Oh, there it is. I wasn't far away. There we go. Right. 11mm start point. And there we go. That's our test piece ready to go. Because it's a half inch pitch dovetail, I tend to work with material that's in half inch increments. On our cabinet we've got two different dimensions, haven't we? We've got the wider one from the bottom and the narrow one from the top. That's four inch, 102 mil. That's three inch, 76 mil. So I've not got the potential to have a really skinny piece here when I'm dovetailing to potentially snap off in cutting or when we're trying to fit it together. So these work really well on material that's cut and used at the half inch increments. First cut I'm going to do, I'm getting ready for the first cut now. It's going to be a little scribe cut. It's not full, the, the guide bush isn't even going to come into contact with my fingers. It's a little scribe cut and we're running from right to left this way. Called a, also called a climb cut. A scribe cut just to remove this material here and the reason for that is as we're doing our main cut we're coming in this way and then we're coming back out and as we're coming back out there's a potential for the cutter to break out this area and we'll end up with some splintering some chipping in this area here but if we've already removed that with a scribe cut there's nothing there to chip off it's gone so that's going to be my first cut I'll do the cut I'll show you and I'll do the rest of the dovetail. Following these fingers, I'll go all the way there from left to right and all the way back from right to left, just in case I missed anything. Okay, are we good, Ben? Good. Okay, so eyes on. I'm going to put my ears on for this. Power on. Okay. Just leave that extractor to stop for a moment, just to clear the pipes. Almost there. So all the way along here, this looks really untidy, really wavy, don't worry, that's not the key. The key is this crisp, clean corner all the way along. There's no potential for breakout now. We've already removed the material, there's nothing to break out. So scribe cut from right through to left, that way. And then we're gonna start here. We're gonna come in, we're gonna go out, we're gonna go in, we're gonna go out, and back again. Okay, let's do that. Eyes and ears back on. Oh, 
again, just in case. Okay, so come off the tempo, please. Gonna miss something. Only the gear, it's okay. Turn it off. Well, it's good that you don't lift the router off at this stage. Well, that cutter's still moving and potentially catch the template fingers all this. So wait till it comes to a complete stop. All right. There we are. Now, what we can see, what we can see, is a really clean, crisp continuation, a following of these fingers. Everything's lovely and clean in here. Don't worry about the burn marks at the back here. That's inside the cut. And that's because there's a slight pause when you're coming around the back. And you get more burning on end grain anyway. We know that. Let's have a look. Let's just take it out and see what we've got for fit. Mm -hmm. We may need to tweak and make some adjustments, but that's the whole point of doing test pieces. So we'll slide that one out. We'll slide that one out. Blow off any loose. We've got a little bit of fluff there. But we can just brush that off, it's next to nothing. I don't want it inside my joint when I'm coming together. So let's have a look. Oh, that's just a little tight. Sides are lovely and flush. It's lovely and crisp and clean. And to be honest, I could persuade that in there. But I just feel that it's a tad too tight. These sides are beautiful. That tells me that I got my centering of material to fingers just right. So that is really cool. So we've gone from, well, we've gone from that to machining that to a little flip over, and we are so close. You can see that almost wants to go in. But now I just want to make a change. I want to remove more material all round off these these dovetail, these angled surfaces here. And to do that, I just need to lift the cutter a small amount half a millimeter maybe half a millimeter is just too much but just a little thing just a tiny amount that's why a router with some sort of fine adjuster is really important really good it makes life a lot easier when you're doing this sort of work so let's have a look at that i'll put my material back in i'm going to mark up the end that i've done so i don't mix them up in a minute now you can't remachine this you can't Make your adjustment and go in again. Because of the dovetail, you're going to end up with a, a little step. And if you keep going and step, 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 you'll end up with quite a nice little kind of Christmas tree effect. It looks quite nice, but it's a bit of a weird looking dovetail, I've got to tell you. So let's just flip everything around. I've made sure the other end is square. All right. Up against the workpiece, uh, up against the template. Next piece in, inside facing out. Up against my side stop, locked off, tweak that one so we're nice and level. There we go. Alright, so we're level there. Now I don't need to make another 11mm line, I just need to lift that cutter up, like I said, a very, very small amount. Alright, so we've got a scale on this one, so if we zero off, to a point there, zero. So if I'm going, there we go. And we'll do another scribe cut, just the same. And then we'll come in and do it just the same way. And we'll have a little test for fit. Right, so we are ready to go again. Turn the router off. Hopefully it comes to a complete stop. And we can take it out of the way. Let's remove any of that. Look how 
clean those cuts are. You know, like that. So that is a really nice dovetail. There's no gaps here. One thing we have got is a little bit of overhang that way. To be honest, we want the overhang the other way. So this board, a horizontal board, is overhanging the vertical board just a little bit, just so we can sand this back to this, because sanding this back to this, or planing, is really difficult. And that's easily controlled. And what we need to do is just pop that in. And this is where you can remachine, because we're not adjusting height just adjusting okay there's a little line on the top here now that gives you a guideline you really want to start with that line in line for when you but where your board mat meets where those two boards meet all right to allow the cutter to come into this board a bit more I just need to move this template backwards and that is again easily done. And just undo those. Do both sides so it stays as square and as level as we can get it. Okay. All right, so I've just moved that back enough to give me a tiny little bit of overhang. Just make sure we're positioned where we need to be. I think I'm just going to very quickly nip the ends off and go again. So I'm just going to chop the ends off on the saw. Yeah, why not? Alright, so we've got the table saw going here. We need the sliding carriage, extraction's on. Just want to square off the ends. Hands are nice and clear, they're well back. Lovely, clean and square. Same thing. Off we go. Right, let's load that back in now. Having made those fine adjustments. Inside facing out. Up against side stop, up against fingers. Lock him off. 18mm piece in from the side. Up against side stop, lock him off, flush, flush, inside facing out, inside facing out. All right. what we're looking for flush sides the tiniest little bit of overhang to plane this back to this only a little bit needed because trying to get it dead flush is difficult and you might end up as we had it to start with the other way where this is above this and we've got to try and skim that entire board down which is tough so look at that that is beautiful clean crisp splodge of glue clamp for an hour and we're ready to move on so that's my test cut. I'm absolutely ready now just to dive into the project. So the first bit I'm gonna do is what we've set up for, which is a wider piece. I'm gonna mark in, and it's pretty obvious on this cabinet size, which is in, because we've got the shelf groove. However, I'll mark in anyway. So as long as inside's facing out, happy days. That goes in. This is the beauty of working or setting up with exactly the same material width and thickness 
because you've done, you know, it could be just the end of the off cut from one of these, but that's going to be your setup piece because it's all machined to the same thickness at 16 and 18 maybe, and the same dimensions all round. That is perfect, eh? So you can really just crack on through it. Finish with that piece for a minute, and we'll introduce the other side, inside face here. Up we go, in we go, locked off. See that now it's important that you don't flip this over. All we're going to do is move end to end. Alright, so it's just a rotation. No flipping. No flipping. Side stop, there we go. Locked off. Double check what we've got going on down here. Nice and level. And away we go. that bit dealt with that's ready to go together All right. we've got to work on the narrower section now now remember still inside facing out so don't flip it just place it in up against the side stop and at this point I'm just going to check that we're centered I think we're just off a little bit so I'm going to make a minor adjustment and center my material reset the side stop because we are working on different dimension of material now. This is narrower. So, let's just... There we go. That'll do for me. Side stop over to me, my material. Oh, there is it, there it is. Lock off. There we go. And then I can bring in my narrow piece, the, the top shelf as we call it. Now, have I got an inside or a now? That's a little bit prettier, so that will be the inside of the cabinet. Don't want to see it. It's 18 mil again, so I haven't got to adjust the height of this. It can work with the, the original packer. Side stop does the work for you. That's preset. You know, independently adjustable side stops that are just damn awkward, to be fair. All right, we're ready to go. Cutter height's the same, because material thickness, all that's the same. Just tweaked the side stop. Here we go again. It's just a little bit easier because there's one less finger because we're on a narrower board. So that board is now done. You can see. Right there. So we introduce the other board inside facing out. Up against the side stop, up against the underside of my fingers. Unclamp, rotate end to end, don't flip. It goes in, over, up against our material, lock off. Tweak, fine tune, make sure that we're level and the side stops making proper contact. And that's it, clamps really well. And away we go. So you can see once you've got the setup done, repeat, repeat, repeat. It's, it's really quite easy. Yeah, 
back again. Now you may have noticed that I'm holding my router down here. It's a personal preference thing. I do feel safe, I'm not gonna put my fingers in the cutter because although this is a router that feels good in the hand um, and it's come probably from my habit of dealing with bigger routers where the handles are up here and using them on a dovetail jig like this, as even with a support, there's. I don't know, I'm, I'm worried about it, just tipping and rocking. But if I'm down, I've got a real good feel. I can feel, because you've got to feel the template. You can't see what you're doing. You want to be in contact. It's, it's the same reason that I prefer body grip jigsaws to de-handle jigsaws, because I'm closer to the cutting action. Still safe, but closer to the cutting action, giving me, the operator, the greater control. And I think that's an important thing with any power tool that it should feel like an extension of your hand, your fingers, your arm, and you've got complete control and feel comf comfortable using it. If it starts to feel awkward or any reason, no matter what power tool it is, then just stop, reassess. Now, is this the best way to do this job? The safest way to do this job? But, so I've just developed this. I like to hold it here because it feels better for me. That's what it is. Right, moment of truth, I guess now, Ben. Right, so if, can we can we get into this area of yeah. the, the bench? Let's just switch that over, move my Tef's piece. All right, so we'll have a little bit of assembly here now. All right, so we'll get the top in, we'll get the bottom in. Now each one you'll see just drops in. I've not really got to get the tapometer out. All right. It's just, and, and I think that's a good, good test for fit. Can I, with a little bit of my manual force, get it in? If it just falls in, it's probably a little bit too loose, and you might have you might struggle squaring everything up. Because this should almost square itself, to be fair. But at the same time, you don't want to have to belt it to really get it into position. So just a little. There we go. If you can see that, that, the tiniest little push would be square from there. Look at that. Beautiful. I've not squared this, it's straight off the jig. So if your material's square and your setup's right, there we are. Three inch lapped half blind dovetails, four inch lapped half blind dovetails. Splodgy glue and a little bit of sanding, it's sweet. Right. See that? Ooh, it's ah. good. Yeah. <laughs> really effective and quite easy to master as long as you get those keys right. That 11 mil, everything's flat and level, everything's square. Um, so that's a half blind or lap dovetail. You can also obviously do on, on this particular jig. Uh, through dovetails, visible from both sides, slightly different template, but something like this. To do this, you can do box joints, and as said, this particular jig is in development to do far more than those three joints. We're not going to give any secrets away just yet, but it's super excited because it's being made over there across the road. If I was to open the window, I could see where this is being made. UK made this. So I think we are just about done there. We have kind of the, the carcass of a cabinet, a spice rack, where we profiled the sides, made a little jig, didn't we, ourselves, to create our shelf groove. And cool as today, we have done different sized lapped dovetails. So next time we will be, I'll fit the shelf, that's a quick and easy thing, don't worry about that. But we'll be looking at a raised panel profile and scribe door. So, kind of as complicated as routing gets, in my opinion. Um, but that's on the next workshop Wednesday. Thank you 
for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you've got any comments, please drop them in. We'll get back with an answer as soon as physically possible. Um, also, don't forget to catch Colwyn's video tomorrow. He's, and it's super exciting for me as well, because he's making fishing floats and fishing laws. And a fisherman myself, living on the south coast, you've got to be a fisherman. I think it's the law, I don't know. Um, so it's super exciting. I shall be tuning in with you guys, so make sure you're there. Um, we've been uh, Ben and Craig at the Axminster Skill Centre at Home series of videos. Thank you once again, and we'll see you soon. Bye now.